Hey everyone, this is Aaron from Team Sketchy. I know, I know what you're thinking. Where, what? Where's Andrew? Where's my narrator? The one with the sweet, sweet voice that's like white chocolate to my ears. Well, just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Aaron, and I'm going to help wrap up these last few Parasite videos. Also, our next big project in the works is Sketchy Pharmacology. And it's something that I'm helping create and narrate. So soon we'll be able to learn drug drug interactions sketchy style. Until then, the topic at hand is Babesia, a parasitic protozoa that causes babesiosis. For 25 to 50 percent of patients, infection with this parasite is subclinical or mild. However, severe cases can cause malaria-like symptoms and even death. Infection can present in several different ways, mainly involving the blood. Since blood is involved, our setting will be in a castle full of vampires. Vampire babes, to be exact. These vampire babes will remind you that babesiosis causes predominantly blood-related symptoms, including hemolytic anemia, hemoglobinuria, and resulting jaundice. So Babesia is carried by the Ixodes tick, and is spread to humans, and farm animals, through the saliva of a tick. The longer the tick is attached to its prey, the higher the likelihood of transmission of Babesia. Note that the Ixodes tick, also called a deer tick, is the vector for other infamous parasites, like Borrelia burgdorferi, which causes Lyme disease. This means that co-infection is common. Like Borrelia, Babesia is most common in the Americas, particularly in the Northeast. For reasons unknown, in these areas, Borrelia burgdorferi is much more commonly transmitted than Babesia. Another interesting fact Approximately 25% of people in Rhode Island are seropositive for Babesia. Anyway, I digress. Let's look up at that castle wall. We will draw in a coat of arms, a shield with an engraving of a tick, which is our recurring symbol indicating that this is a tick-borne illness. Let's add some antlers above the shields to add to the creepy Gaston-esque decor and of course to remind us that Ixodes is a deer tick. We mentioned a possible symptom of hemolytic anemia, so we are adding a row of blood-red stained glass windows that are cracked and weather-worn, and shards of glass have fallen to the floor below. Notice how they are round like red blood cells and shattered to remind you of hemolysis. Huh, what a beautiful representation of hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic anemia can result in jaundice, so we will include one more vampire babe dressed in yellow under the shattered glass. If you haven't noticed yet, vampire babes are congregating around their next bloody meal. They have captured none other than Robin of Exodes himself. Ugh, I know that guy. This is awkward. Let's represent the other symptoms of babesiosis with poor Robin. He is sweating with fear and febrility from full-fledged babesiosis. I remember when I first had full-fledged babesiosis. I was young and in love and just about to get stabbed in the spleen unknowingly. Anyways, the bottom of Robin's sweaty shirt is torn in an irregular jagged pattern to remind you of the irregularly cycling fevers. It's time to introduce the leader of the vampire babes, the vampire queen holding up a sickle, ready to draw first blood. What does the sickle represent? Sickle cell, of course. What is the relationship between Babesia and sickle cell disease? Well, asplenic patients are more likely to be symptomatic with Babesiosis and have a higher risk of severe disease. And patients with sickle cell pretty much have asplenia from autosplenectomy. To illustrate asplenia, we will draw a hole in Robin's tunic in the shape of a spleen. The babes have opened up a window for the queen to cut into one of the bloodiest of organs. So how do you diagnose babesiosis? 
It is done through a blood smear. See the thick red carpet with a smear of blood on the floor, leading to where Robin is now hanging from the ceiling? It's going to illustrate a blood smear on a slide. Usually it could just be a smear, but we want it to illustrate a thick smear. In the center, we will place a Maltese cross. The Maltese cross represents the appearance of an infected red blood cell. The cross is formed by a tetrad of trophozoites and is helpful for diagnosis of babesiosis and differentiation from malaria, which may look similar. It looks a little off-center, right? We did that purposely to have it point in the northeast direction. Why? Remember that the geographic distribution of Babesia is predominantly in the U.S. northeast, along with Borrelia. To talk about treatment, let's go back to our queen. Her name is Queen Atova, the Ato Vampire Queen. Let's include her pet crows perched on her shoulders. Can you imagine what Queen Atova and the crows represent? The drugs used to treat babesiosis, atovaquone and azithromycin. Azithromycin, a frequently used drug, is a macrolide. So remember our recurring symbol of crows for macrolide. Because I feel we should end on a positive note, I'd like to add one more thing. Many healthy people with babesiosis are scarcely symptomatic and can spontaneously recover. Well, that's all. Until our next parasitic infection.